So you join me here today in a barn in the middle of nowhere, and it's a barn that I never quite thought I'd be able to experience at this level and at this close proximity to these beautiful cars. We've got everything from classic Ferrari 355s, 812s, M3 CSLs, Aston Martins, Porsches, Escort Cosworths, the list goes on. And the reason I'm here, you'll find out just after I've rolled the intro. So I'll start to talk you through some of the cars. Obviously, this is one of my absolute favorites and something that I do aspire to own one day. RS2000 with a nose cone, rare and worth quite a lot of money. I've got a 918 GT4, some form of Golf GTI 16 valve, not really big on my Golfs. I had a new one, but not an old one. GT3, not an RS, I've just been told. Does look like one, but nope, it's just a GT3. It's not as stripped out as an RS. This is one that I particularly think is very rare. It's a Z3M, and as I've just been told, and it is quite a great analogy, something that I've not been heard before, it looks like a clown shoe. It's also got a panoramic roof, which is quite a rare option. And is it a manual car? I believe it will be a manual. Yes, it's a manual with the same gear knob that all BMWs have had for years. This is an M3 GT. I believe one of 50, I may stand corrected, but it's in this burgundy color. Not really a fan, but I can appreciate um, the rarity of that and how many people it will appeal to. This for me, now this, this is an absolute dream of mine. This is a GT3 Touring, and it's something that obviously we know a really famous presenter called Chris Harris. He has a yellow one, but in black, it just, oh. Nice sex. Another RS2000 nose cone. That gets rallied and the fuel consumption is a little bit sickening, especially in today's climate with it being £1.50 a litre. This consumes a litre a mile when it's out on the rally tracks. Ridiculous. Obviously, we've got the racing Porsches, which I don't know much about, but they're all from like Le Mans and they've come back winning cars, they've been brought over. Don't know too much about those. This We'll get to this in a bit because we're going to be talking more about that one over there, which is a Defender 110 twisted. But this is a Defender 110 HUE. Now, that is one of the last ones off the production line, and they are fetching incredible amounts of money. I mean, when these came out, they were silly prices anyway. They were like 50, 60 grand from memory. Now they're pushing, nearly touching six figures, which is mad. A Paul Smith Mini. I'm a lover of a Mini, but today there's a lot more that's just completely distracting me from Minis, I can say the least. A Ferrari 355 Spider. I've been told I keep calling it a 355, and there's a lot of nuts in the comments that say, oh, it's not a 355, it's a 355. This E46 M3, without a doubt, the best aging M3 or BMW car ever made. Now, these cars are knocking on for 20 odd years old, and it looks modern, it looks new. I would happily deal with that, but because it's a CSL, which makes it even rarer, this car is probably worth in excess of 100,000 for an M3. And for that price, you get in bucket seats. I think you get a bit of a different diff and it's just a few little modern tweaks, but they have just appreciated ridiculously. Ferrari, it just piece of pawn to say the least. Another one that I do really like is this Ferrari 488 Spider. It looks amazing with the carbon mirrors, but one thing I did say, this carbon splitter, I would actually be sick in my hands if I scuffed that on a curb because I would not like to think about how much that costs to replace. Moving further down, we've got an Audi Quattro and there's a car just currently next to the cameraman, which I will come back and talk about in a minute because there's something rather special with that one. But we've got the Audi Quattro, again, stunning paint, really good example. And then this one is out of a film that many of you will know about with Nicolas Cage. And um, that film is gone in 60 seconds. And this is in fact, Eleanor. It's not the one, it's a replica, GT500. Not quite sure if a Ford made that, but it was made for the film. And it is a higher car, but that is just, it's just absolutely. Oh, look at the size of that door. You've got about a two meter step just, just to get into it, but we're gonna hopefully try and start this up because I've been told it sounds unreal. Shut the door without breaking it. Before we listen to the roar of that Mustang, let me tell you about this hidden gem. This exact car was formerly owned by ex-racing driver James Hunt, 
who won the Formula One World Championship in 1976. He owned this car for 14 years and at one point it was photographed upon bricks outside his home. The Mercedes 450 SEL has a huge 6.9 litre V8, which launched in 1974 as the fastest ever four-door production car, which obviously made them desirable to most young racing drivers, millionaires and those filthy rich businessmen. With a near 7 litre V8 you'd be expecting massive horsepower numbers. Well, they were big for back in the day, with this machine pushing out 285 bhp. However, nowadays most 2 litre engines with a couple of massive turbo straps to then make this look oversized and underpowered. But that's how time moves on I suppose. But with that said, this screams cool, and who knows maybe one day I can come back and produce a full episode just on the history of this car and how it drives. But for now, back to the shed. Yet you're still extremely fast, how do you do it? Big balls. And further back, we've got a 318 IS, which is an absolutely perfect, fine example. The red on it is just so deep, it's, it's insane. 993, just gorgeous paint again. An ST Fiesta on the newer range. And we've got an ST150, which I'll feature later in this video, and you can see more about it. And obviously, a Clio Trophy. So that's a quick introduction to what's in this shed. But there is four sheds that I'm not allowed to film because there's stuff in there. But other than that, we'll get around these cars, we'll show some shots, and you'll see exactly why I'm here. And I've got a surprise at the end of this video, which could leave you taking a car home for yourself. walk into this other shed now and this is where all the fun begins and hopefully this sign will explain why I'm here. Welcome to the raffle shed. So in this shed pretty much all of these cars in here will be up for raffle and you'll have the chance to win them. There's a select few that we've still not decided yet whether they're gonna come in the raffle. One of them is gonna be this MX-5 and this MX-5 is a one owner car and I'll just show you before we move on to it in more detail later, the, the service file on this is just, this is called being anal at your best. So that's all there for that. Couple of Renault Clios now. This one is rather special. This is a trophy. It is one of 500 made, and it's a very, very good example. That will most definitely be coming up for a raffle. This Clio 172 will be coming up for a raffle. And yes, between the two, there's only 10 horsepower, but there's something about a red trophy that just makes it so much better. We'll move further down. Not quite sure on this one, because this is a uh, four-door M3. Very rare, to say the least. This is a BMW 318iS, and it's a very, very good example. The interior is just, it's like nobody's ever stepped foot in the car. It's just a fine example. Even the bolts are still silver. It smells new. And if you're a true, true, true BMW fan, you'll realize that that gear knob has never changed in all these years. Another one for all you people that are looking to learn to drive and get into a nice hot hatch and insurance is a problem, everything's expensive. Here we have a Fiesta ST150. One owner, 6,000 miles. Barely been used. It's absolutely pristine. I've never seen anything like it. It's 
it's, it smells brand new. It's, it's not normal that it's, the mileage is so low. So that's gonna be another one. This Mark 1 MX-5, 30,000 miles, one owner. And I did say we'd get a bit geeky with the file. It is just ridiculous. It's got pretty much every option you could ask for. So there's a lot of information in here, obviously that I can't really show you because it's got addresses on it and stuff. But there was one bit that really tickled my fancy. Obviously that was a road tax. Wow, 225 pound a year road tax. Then it went to 230, 265 it went to, ridiculous. And then this is the one that got me. This, this made me think, wow, MOT certificate, but every single tax disc from the first year they had it, 98. So 98 all the way until 14, when obviously tax discs became obsolete and you don't need them. This dates from the original bill of sale, when you can get the car, the log books, the V5s, the service history, um, vehicle handover procedure. It's got the MOT certificates for every single year, dating back to when they first got it. And by looking at this, in the space of three years, this car did 500 miles. Now, one thing I'm confident with here with all the other metal I've seen is, if this car is this good on the outside and with the paperwork, surely that engine bay has to just be absolutely pristine. And yes, it is. Wow. One thing I've always adored with these Mark 1s is the pop-up headlights. Now, to me, look at that. I'm pretty sure you guys will love that too. It's just so cool. You know, <laughs> it just makes you smile. It gives the car a face, doesn't it? But driving down those country lanes and these lights, just give them a little flick up. They just look so retro and so cool. And that's what I love because it's like a bit of Ferrari in a cheap car. <laughs> Welcome to the Land Rover Defender, the most iconic of them all. And you'll know why, because this boxy shape has been in production for near 70 years, with the first one coming out in 1947, the Series 1 Land Rover that was, where the lights were in the middle, and it's just been minor adaptations over the years. And the great thing about the Series 1, the registration on it was HUE 166, and you'll probably realise that that's quite a famous plate, and I've got a treat for you because we do have one of those cars here, one of the last ever ones, and we'll sit it next to this. In fact, before I tell you about this Defender, let me tell you the story of how it came into production. Way back in the 1940s, Chief Engineer Morris Wilkes of Rover Car Company and his brother Spencer set out to produce a car that could go absolutely anywhere. And they did. After five months, they had a prototype known as the Land Rover. It was then later launched at the Amsterdam Motor Show on the 30th of April 1948 and went on sale for a staggering £450. To put that into perspective, if you were to purchase a really early one nowadays, you'd be paying close to 80 times that for a show condition example. Land Rover for many years as a brand has presented a lifestyle. Go outdoors, agriculture and just pure ASBO if you want to go traipsing through mud and lakes. You'll be familiar with the stickers, One Life, Live It. I won't say much more on that subject. But today I'm here with a more modern Defender and how about we find out why. What makes this car so special is it's a twisted Defender. And they tend to take these Defenders and make them a little bit more beefy and a bit stocky with like the large wheels, everything's blacked out, fancy interiors. And yeah, it's just, uh, it's a piece of Land Rover porn for all you Land Rover lovers. So I'll step inside the car and I'll show you what this twisted Defender currently has. Now, if you've ever driven one of these, you'll realize there's a problem. It's this door there's absolutely nowhere to rest your arms so you feel like you're you're trapped in and you're going for a sunday dinner at your grand's and she's saying keep your elbows off the table but there is one fix for this and in a normal land rover you'd reach for a window winder but not in a twisted one you press this the window goes down elbow out and you can drive along but all i need now is a flat cap Anyway, enough of me complaining about the typical Land Rover Defender issues 
because this twisted defender comes with a twist. You can win this defender on the I Giveaway Classics website, but the best thing is all the profit from this raffle will be being donated to the Children's Hospice Foundation to help young kids. So not only are you getting a beautiful car, you're also doing a good cause as well. So let's take a look at it on the open road. Chunky, I know. So why don't you grab a ticket and get involved? One thing I've learned today, spending my time here, especially at I Giveaway Classics, is the cars that are going to be up for raffle are cars that are like one owners, true proper examples, and like the pinnacle of collector's cars. And the reality is, you can win something that you could either be keeping as an investment or something you could use as a Sunday drive car. Now, the BMWs, for one, you know, they're fetching silly money, the trophies are, but every car that seems to be raffled off here and he's going to fetch in good competitions and bringing better cars and better vehicles into this, this sort of market, this is the place to be because they're not only doing it for a good cause for charitable events, but they're also putting the proper cars in petrol heads' hands. Yeah, I've, uh, I've really enjoyed it here today and I think we'll be seeing much more of these guys and hopefully a few feature films will be on the way. So I wanna thank you all for watching. If you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. It does help, but in the meantime, make sure you do everything in style and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Join me next time where the I giveaway guys allow me to take a GR Yaris out in the wet.